Hello, viewers, and welcome to Intriguing Megalithic Perspectives. The 12 Angle Stone of Hatun Rumiak is a UNESCO World Heritage Object and is visited by thousands of people every day. Someday it may also become the most photographed rock in the world. After getting their pictures taken next to it, tourists then admire the amazing fit of the stones throughout the entire wall and absorb the legendary stories about the stone and try to make up their own minds as to how this was done. And although how it was done will likely remain a complete mystery for many more years, after visiting the 12 Angled Stone now several times, I still consider it to be impossible to do again, but I do now have a perspective as to what Hatan Rumiak was originally built to do. Only three sides, not at all fancy, hmm. It seems so obvious to me, and yet nobody has ever produced a video on this topic. So here I go. This short video is about the ugly truth regarding Hatan Rumiak. The name Hatan Rumiak is Quechua for the House of the Large Stones. This 400 by 300 foot walled in square has the largest ancient, irreplaceable, non reproducible, enormous mortarless polygonal stonework in all of Cusco. Hatun Rumiak is not to be confused with Sacks of Women, which is way up on the hill overlooking Cusco and has truly monstrous stones. The known history of Hatun Rumiak is that during the 300 years of the Inca Empire from the 1200s to the 1530s, this stone wall enclosure had been the safe haven and home to many of the Inca royals. This includes the family of Manco Capac in the 1250s and Pachacutec in the mid 1300s, and also the well known Inca Roca and his large family for several decades in the late 1300s. And Inca royalty continued to live and or administrate from within the walls of these large stones until the arrival of the conquistadors in 1532. In that year, Cusco was sacked and the house of the large stones was stripped of its lumber and also many of the smaller stones were taken and repurposed in the various churches and bridges nearby. In 1536, one corner of what was left of the palace was roofed over, and that corner became the house of Valverde Contreras. His title, assigned by the Pope, was to be the protector of the indigenous, but within a few years, his reputation became quite the opposite. And as a result, he was captured and executed in Ecuador by the indigenous in 1541. After that, the many Catholic residents of Hatun Rumiak, including Jaraba, the Marquis of Roca Fuerte, and a long list of bishops and archbishops, whom were also assigned to Cusco by the Pope. And during the 1600s, the remaining majority of the enclosure was not used for anything. Additionally, stories of martyrs and ghosts were abundant, and as a result, the indigenous avoided employment at Hatun Rumiak. In the early 1700s, fresh topsoil was brought in. Also, Hatan Rumiak's walls were rebuilt and beautified back up to the height of 20 feet. The Catholic Church wanted to make a visible effort to move on from what had happened almost 200 years earlier. Time helps to heal all wounds. But then, in the 1930s, the entire square was finally built upon and became the palace of the Archbishop who genuinely wanted to bring life and cultural beauty back to this spot. The second courtyard is world-renowned for several grand features. And lastly, in 1950, the final remaining pile of more than 30 scattered polygonal stones were meticulously puzzle-pieced back together to rebuild the southeastern wall. Today, the Hatan Rumiak Wall is a cobbled together historical and mysterious place that has an intentionally untold past. And although this history is ugly, it is not the ugly that I want to convey in this video. Give me a couple more minutes, 
I'm getting there. Today, most people that visit the Hatun Rumiak will first wonder why this amazing and beautiful stonework is about a thousand feet away from and behind the Plaza de Armas and the Catholic Church, in a little alley essentially on the other side of a small hill. And secondly, it can't go unnoticed that the amazing stonework is only on three sides. If you're going to build this kind of wall, why only go with three sides? There is nothing even to suggest that there was ever a fourth wall of large stones. Instead, there is just a perfectly straight and very simple Spanish stone wall capped with an ornate Spanish colonial second floor. What's more, as the observer walks along the Calle Hatarumiak and the Calle Inca Roca, it is clear that the excellent granite stonework is incomparable in quality, and yet it's unfinished and not straight as if quickly done. There are nubs, scoops, and protrusions, and one of the walls has a noticeable bulge in it. This three-walled structure appears to have been hurriedly and inexpensively assembled. Such amazing joinery, yet slapped together quickly, hastily built and not fancy at all? It doesn't make sense. And this is also not the ugly truth that this video is about. So, if the tragic end of the Inca royalty and rushed and sloppy stonework is not the ugly in this video, then what is? Well, let me shift gears and share with you the intriguing megalithic perspective that suddenly popped into my head the first time that I visited Hatan Rumiak. When farmland is first homesteaded, for example, America's Midwest in the 1800s, or the Nagoya farmlands in the 1400s, or anywhere else in the world, and at any time, various aspects of the land are taken into consideration. The highlands, the marshlands, the amount of sunlight, clean drinkable water supplies, the direction of the wind, and more are all part of what need to be fully assessed. The house and the barn are always well built, with a house up higher, and in a position to enjoy the sun and the view of the property. The crops will always be planted on the best land where there is the most sunlight and irrigation is clean and easy. The livestock will be downstream from the clean water supply for all the obvious reasons, and the livestock shelter will always be built last and is typically done hastily and quickly. For example, in a valley shaped like this, with the prevailing winds coming from this direction, the primary house will be placed on the overlooking hill. The crops would be placed facing the sun, and the worker's house would be closest to the crops and close to the cleanest water supply. The livestock would get this area that is left over. Their excrement would drain into this stream, and their shelter would be open in this direction to shelter them from the wind. By now, I think you are also seeing the obvious. Well, let's rotate this map around to match it to the orientation if it's in the southern hemisphere. Yes, the ugly truth is that the Hatan Rumiak is the old livestock shelter. It was quickly built using the apparently easy manipulation of stone technology that was available to this homesteader at that time. Several thousands of years ago, these original homesteaders likely did have cattle but it's also likely that they kept some even larger livestock, and this would explain the need for such an enormous three-sided stone enclosure. Yes, it drains into the other stream, and it shelters the livestock from the prevailing winds and the rain, and it's in the logical spot. The Cori Concha was the working house, Saxa Wayman was the big house on the hill, and all the fields facing the sun were for planting. But this homestead, this impressive plantation, was abandoned sometime after the last ice age ended. Everything was packed up and everything moved on. And the stones have, of course, defied the elements. Several thousands of years later, these stone structures became a house for the ruling family, a central location for the town and markets, and up on the hill, a fortress, if needed, as well as a stadium for tournaments and ceremonies. Hatun Rumiak, the house of the large stones, was an ancient livestock shelter. 
built using a tech and technique that is long gone to shelter large beasts that are also now long gone. This truth isn't pretty, but it makes sense. I'd bet my next week's salary that if a core sample was done in the Archbishop's Palace today, that it would come up with mammoth dung underneath everything else, and that it would be dated to be thousands of years older than the Inca. Thank you for watching my video. Please like and share so that I may continue to create these intriguing megalithic perspectives.